The legend says the tomb sits atop this peak. <sighs> Lovely. We can freeze to death while digging for the bones of a madwoman. kids welcome back to my channel this is mother mantis if you have just finished the mass effect series and you're kind of all primed to play another rpg and you're looking to play another bioware game like maybe the dragon age series and you're thinking to start with inquisition then uh, this video is for you if you did not play uh origins or dragon age 2 then you've missed out on an incredible amount of lore that really gives good context to Thetis and to the Dragon Age story. Um, but those games are kind of hard to go back and play uh, just because of the mechanics and, and the graphics don't look good now by today's standards. Um, but there's so much story that you want to know the context for when you start Inquisition. So this video is going to be just a cliff note version, an introduction to the story as it stands up into the moment that you, the player, arrive in Inquisition and start that game. There's a lot, so this is just the cliff note version. I have a horrible number of hours into Inquisition, and I still, I mean, I can't even remember everything I learned about it when I was first playing the game, which came out like, I don't know, it came out in like 2014. I think I have like 900 hours in that game. I, I In fact, I'm going to... Um, let's say I'm playing eight hours a day. Okay, well, moving on, let's talk about the Dragon Age world at the beginning of Inquisition. Thetis is the southern continent in the known world where most of the game action takes place. The areas where the games are set are primarily the kingdoms of Orle and Ferelden. Additional notable regions, though, are Tevinter, where Dragon Age 4 is set to take place, that's in the north, and Parvalen, which is even further north. What's known of this universe is that magic exists, and it exists because of the Fade. The Fade is a plane of existence more similar to a dimension or a dream world. It's the place where dreamers go, and it's also the source that mages draw upon for their magic. The Fade is populated by spirits that occasionally come into contact with people through their dreams. In the Fade, there are no limitations to the power of the mind. Whatever you can conceive there becomes reality. This is what the real world calls magic. Those who can draw this shaping power from the Fade into the physical world are called mages, people who can temporarily distort reality and shape it to their will. But the Fade is also a dangerous place because it houses demons as well, and mages are particularly susceptible to possession by demons. The Fade is separated from the real or waking world by the Veil, a metaphysical barrier that usually prevents spirits from seeping into the physical world. Magic in Thetis is respected, but it's considered very dangerous because of past history with mages losing control and becoming subject to the will of various demons. So to keep this under control, an order called the Circle is founded. These are places where people with magical abilities live under the supervision of Templars and safely learn to control their powers. The problem is that entering a circle is compulsory in the southern continent. Mages have no choice but to join, they're sent there as children, and they live there forever. If they don't join, or if they escape, they're declared apostates and they must live their lives in hiding. The 
the lore in Theta's history varies according to what race, state, or religion one is, and what some people believe about creation is different from what others believe about creation depending on their culture, and the beliefs come in conflict with each other. The beliefs sound contradictory because they are contradictory. Before humans came to Thetis, the only people living there were the elves. The elves of that time were immortal, and they worshipped a pantheon of gods called the Evanuris. Those gods included a mother and a father figure and several children. The mother figure is Mithal, the father figure is Elgarnon. Among the original gods, there's also a god named Fenharel. There was a group of Evanuris called the Forgotten Ones, who are said to be evil, and Fenharel is said to have tricked all the Evanoris and the Forgotten Ones and trapped them somewhere deep within the Fade, where they remain trapped and slumbering to this day. Fenharel then created the Veil to separate the realm of mortals from the realm of spirits and dreams. His reasons are unknown, but in later decades he's called the Trickster God, or the Dread Wolf, so it's generally accepted that he acted out of his trickster nature. The truth as the game unfolds is a lot more complicated and a lot more compelling. Known history recorded in Thetis tells of how the ancient elves were defeated by the Tevinter Imperium, which is the first significant human presence in Thetis. But Tevinter has always relied on magic for its political and military power and on slavery for its economy. As the losing party in this conflict, the elves have suffered the consequences of their defeat since ancient times. Present-day elves believe they lost their immortality when they came into contact with humans, but again, the truth is hidden and much more complicated. But regardless, their civilization was destroyed and their only descendants are now mortal and scattered across the continent, either enslaved or living in small clans, or are forced to live in ghettos called alienages in major cities across Ferelden and Orlais. The humans in Thetas, the dwarves, and the mages of Tevinter all have different creation beliefs than the elves. I'm going to cover what the dwarves and the mages of Tevinter believe in a following video, but here's what the people of Thetas, led by the Chantry, believe. The Maker first created spirits in the first world, but when he saw that they didn't have the right spark, he created a second world and populated it with physical beings, humans, elves, etc. He then separated his first children, the spirits, from the second children, the living, by creating the veil to part the Fade from the real world. The spirits live in the Fade, but the living can visit it in their dreams. So after his creation was finished, the Maker decided to live in a palace in his golden city. But when a group of Tevinter Magisters, which are powerful mages, tried to enter the palace to search for the old gods, their sinful ambition stained and corrupted the golden city black. The Maker then abandoned his creations only to be called back by Andraste's voice as she sang of her suffering and that of her people. He was so moved he asked her to be his bride, but she asked him, in turn, to give the living a chance to redeem themselves and swore to spread the faith in the Maker called the Chant of Light across Thetis. When she was killed by her Tevinter enemies, the Maker turned away from his creation for good. The Chantry believes that when the Chant of Light is spread across the world, the Maker will return. The Andrastian faith started when Andraste was visited in her dreams by the Maker. She gained followers after being labeled as a prophet and then led a revolt against her former masters in Tevinter, but ultimately she was betrayed and delivered to the enemy and burned at the stake. The game Dragon Age gets its name by how the world denotes certain specific periods of time. So each period is a hundred years and it's called an age. Currently, we're in the Dragon Age. A blight is a devastating event where an archdemon leads hordes of darkspawn, think husks if you're familiar with Mass Effect, through a tear or hole in the veil to destroy the world. Nobody knows exactly where darkspawn come from or why they want to destroy the world. Thetis has seen, up to this point, four such blights prior to the beginning of the Dragon Age games. To combat the blights, the Grey Wardens were formed. Grey Wardens are an order of warriors, including mages, that have been formed to stop the Darkspawn, kill the Archdemons, and end blights. They go through an initiation ritual which involves drinking the blood of a Darkspawn in order to link themselves to their enemy. Grey Wardens can feel Darkspawn when they're close, and they're the only people with the ability and knowledge to kill the Archdemon. 
the darkspawn carry something called the taint, which is sort of like a plague that infects them and anything they come into contact with. Grey Wardens are also infected by a version of the taint through a ritual called the joining, which makes them able to sense darkspawn and more importantly, as I mentioned, permanently defeat the archdemons. Now, to give you the very brief cliff note version of the events of the previous two games leading up to Inquisition. The game is set 10 years prior to the events of Inquisition and you play as the newest member of the Grey Wardens. After the events that lead you to be conscripted by the Wardens take place, you will meet Alistair, another Warden, who is, you will find out later, the bastard son of the King of Ferelden and the half-brother of the current King, Caelan of Ferelden. Alistair was trained as a Templar before joining the Wardens. You've come into the story right at the start of what turns out to be a blight. Every so many years, thin spots will develop in the veil and demons will come into the material world and cause all kinds of havoc. So, you arrive at a large encampment of King Caelan of Ferelden to fight back the demons and it turns out that an archdemon appears there too, signaling the beginning of a blight, much to King Caelan's excitement and eventual regret. So, in the opening event, you find yourself in danger of losing your life several times. You witness the possible betrayal of your king, and the political upheaval that ensues since he has no children, and nobody knows that Alistair is his half-brother, and the beginning of a blight. You and Alistair are the only Grey Wardens left, so it falls to you to save the day. During the opening event, you'll also meet Morrigan, who is a mage and the daughter of a mysterious woman named Flemeth. After the battle, Flemeth will tell her daughter to join you and Alistair on your quest, and from then on, you'll collect a group of friends who will help you throughout the rest of the game, some of whom will also follow you into Dragon Age 2 and 3, including Liliana, a Chantry mage who will become very useful to you and a pivotal player in Dragon Age Inquisition, and you'll also meet Cullen, an advisor in Dragon Age Inquisition in Origins. By the end of the game, you'll manage to kill the Archdemon, but this end can be arrived at with varying details depending on the decisions you made in the events leading up to the final battle. The main character you play in Origins comes to be known as the Hero of Ferelden, or simply the Warden. The second game is told through Varric Tethris's eyes. Varric is a dwarf that you meet in Dragon Age 1. He becomes a companion, and he's also a companion in Dragon Age Inquisition. Varric retells the adventure during an interrogation led by Cassandra. She wants to know where Hawk, the champion of Kirkwall, is and she knows Varric is Hawk's friend. Once Varric starts his tale, you assume control of Hawk, who is a human who is running from the destruction caused from the Blight, along with his family. They all end up in Kirkwall, which is a city with an ugly past, where Hawk meets Varric, takes part in a trip to the Deep Roads, makes some new friends, and the game is generally set against the backdrop of a big conflict between the mages and the Templars. The game unfolds over three acts, so by the third act, you're only two years away from the Inquisition. Towards the end of the game, the conflict between the Templars and mages has escalated to new heights, and without getting too spoily, stuff explodes, the political and social situation gets extremely volatile. And there are some events in Dragon Age 2 that affect Cullen, who at that time is a member of the Templar Order. So the events of Dragon Age 2 will draw him further and further away from the Templars. You'll find out the details of what happened with that as you play Inquisition. Hawk gets the title of Champion of Kirkwall because of his or her role in saving the city from total chaos and destruction. However, the events are so damaging that once Varric is brought in by Cassandra to be questioned on Hawk's whereabouts, Varric hesitates to reveal the truth because he fears that Cassandra wants to arrest Hawk, and this is why, when you meet both Varric and Cassandra at the beginning of the Inquisition, they're not on very good terms. So that's a very low-level look at the state of the world as you begin Inquisition. It's such an extensive universe that it's almost impossible to mention everything. The level of detail in the backstory and the lore of this series is pretty astounding and it'll be fun to get into it in more depth as well as chat about how the story will continue in the time we have before we learn more about Dragon Age 4. <laughs>